Good morning, and welcome to worship this morning. Let's praise our Lord. <laughs> Good morning. Welcome to worship. We're so glad to have all who are here with us this morning. Before we get started, I'd like to take a moment to welcome any visitors we may have with us this morning with a, a greeting card. Do we have any visitors with us today? All familiar faces, so glad to have you all with us. We begin our service today in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our heart by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sin, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Please kneel as you're able or remain seated for the confession. Most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. By what we have done and by what we have left undone, 
We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for you. And for his sake, God forgives you of all your sins and grants you the Holy Spirit to guide you in truth and faith. Amen. Please rise. We have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. And may this peace be with you all. Let us share the peace with one another. unite our hearts in praying together the prayer of the day. Let us pray. Lord God, Alpha and Omega, hold us. You may be seated. The first lesson is from Acts, the 20th chapter. Now from Miletus, Paul sent to Ephesus and called the elders of the church to come to him. And when they came to him, he said to them, you yourselves know how I lived among you the whole time and from the first day I set foot in Asia, serving the Lord with all humility and with tears and with trials that happened to me through the plots of the Jews. How did I not shrink from declaring to you anything that was profitable and teaching you in public from house to house, testifying both to Jews and to Greeks of repentance toward God and of the faith of our Lord Jesus Christ. And now, behold, I am going to Jerusalem, 
constrained by the Spirit, not knowing what will happen to me there, except that the Holy Spirit testifies to me in every city that imprisonment and afflictions await me. But I do not account my life of any value, nor as precious to myself, if only I may finish my course and the ministry that I received from the Lord Jesus to testify to the gospel of the grace of God. And now behold, I know that none of you among whom I have gone about proclaiming the kingdom will see my face again. Therefore I testify to you this day that I am innocent of the blood of all. For I do not shrink from declaring to you the whole counsel of God. Pay careful attention to yourselves and to all the flock in which the Holy Spirit has made you overseers to care for the church of God, which he obtained with his own blood. Know that after my departure, fierce wolves will come in among you, not sparing the flock. And from your own selves will arise men speaking twisted things to draw away the disciples after them. Therefore, be alert, remembering that for three years I did not cease night or day to admonish everyone with tears. And now I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and give you the inheritance among all those who are sanctified. The word of the Lord. The second lesson is from Revelation, the seventh chapter. After this, I looked and behold, a great multitude that no one could number from every nation, from all tribes and peoples and languages standing before the throne and before the lamb clothed in white robes with palm branches in their hands and crying out in a loud voice, salvation belongs to our God who sits on the throne and to the lamb. And all the angels were standing around the throne and around the elders and the four living creatures and they fell on their faces before the throne and worship God saying, amen, blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be to our God forever and ever, amen. Then one of the elders addressed me saying, who are these clothed in white robes and, for, and from where have they come? I said to him, sir, you know. And he said to me, these are the ones coming out of the great tribulation. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the lamb. Therefore, they are before the throne of God and serve him day and night in his temple, and he who sits on the throne will shelter them with his presence. They shall hunger no more, neither first thirst any more. The sun shall not strike them, nor any scorching heat. For the lamb in the midst of the throne will be their shepherd, and he will guide them to the springs of the living water, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. The word of the Lord.
Come on up, kids. Nice job singing. I remember that song from when I was young. Ooh, that must have been a long time ago. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I guess it was. Hi there. I see you. So do you guys like playing outside? Ooh, I do. You play on a jungle gym? Uh, no. Monkey bars? Hey. I like monkey bars. Especially when they're chocolate. Oh, chocolate monkey bars, huh? <laughs> Well, when you're playing outside, say maybe in your backyard or the front yard, and you hear somebody call you, who is it usually who's calling you? Your parents, right. And how do you know it's them? Because they're numbers. They're numbers? I don't get it. How do you know it's your parents? By their voice. By their voice. Yeah, you recognize their well, voice, don't you? Somebody. Yep. Well, in the gospel lesson today, Jesus says that his sheep hear his voice and they follow him. Hmm? What does his voice sound like? Boy, that's a good question. I don't, do any of you know what Jesus' voice the sounds car. like? Hmm? The car. I don't think it sounds like a car. No, I don't think so. Well, we, we don't know exactly what his voice sounds like, so how are we going to know if what we're hearing is coming from Jesus? Well, I bet you already know, and I'm going to have you do a little test. I'm going to have you close your eyes, and I'm going to say something, and I want you to tell me whether this is something Jesus said or something he didn't say. Okay? Close your eyes. I died for your sins. Was that Jesus' voice? That's something he said, right? I think so. Yep, so you know that. Okay, close your eyes again. We'll try something else. Jesus doesn't really love you. Was that? No, 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 no. That's not his voice. No, that was somebody else. That was a wolf, wasn't it? Okay, we'll, tr we'll try some more. Let's try one more. Close your eyes again. God loves you more than anyone. Jesus' voice or not? Yeah. yeah. Yes. Awesome. Yep. See, I think you already are starting to know Jesus' voice. You don't know exactly what it sounds like, but you know by the words and by what he says. And you can know for sure that your sins are forgiven. When you hear that, that's Jesus' voice. I was swing on a swing, then I hurt my leg. You hurt your leg on the swing? Hmm. You know what Jesus said when you fell off? He said, ouch. <laughs> yeah, when you hurt yourself, Jesus feels those things too, and he wants to help heal them. So, you know, you can learn more and more about how to hear Jesus' voice in Sunday school and here in church and even at home reading your Bible and talking with your parents. So, it's really good that you already know what Jesus' voice sounds like. So, how about we say a prayer and we'll head back to our seats. Dear God, help us to listen for Jesus' voice and to follow him all the way to heaven. We pray in his name. Amen. Amen. See ya. We stand for the hearing of the gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 10th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. At that time, the Feast of Dedication took place at Jerusalem. It was winter, and Jesus was walking in the temple in the colonnade of Solomon. So the Jews gathered around him and said to him, How long will you keep us in suspense? 
If you are the Christ, tell us plainly. Jesus answered them, I told you, and you do not believe. The works that I do in my Father's name bear witness about me, but you do not believe because you are not among my sheep. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. I give them eternal life and they will never perish, and no one will snatch them out of my hand. My Father who has given them to me is greater than all, and no one is able to snatch them out of the Father's hand. I and the Father are one. The Jews picked up stones again to stone him. Jesus answered them, I have shown you many good works from the Father. For which of them are you going to stone me? The Jews answered him, It is not for a good work that we are going to stone you, but for blasphemy, because you, being a man, make yourself God. Jesus answered them, Is it not written in your law, I said you are gods? If he called them gods, to whom the word of God came, and scripture cannot be broken, do you say of him whom the Father consecrated and sent into the world, you are blaspheming? because I said I am the Son of God? If I am not doing the works of my Father, then do not believe me. But if I do them, even though you do not believe me, believe the works, that you may know and understand that the Father is in me and I am in the Father. Again they sought to arrest him, but he escaped from their hands. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord You may be seated. Fellow sheep of the Good Shepherd, grace to you and peace from God our Father and our Lord Jesus the Christ. Amen. When are you going to quit playing games with us? If you're the Messiah, just tell us. Unless I place my finger in the holes from the nails and my hand in the spear wound, I will not believe. Show me the evidence of the resurrection. If Jesus is alive, where is he? These questions and statements and others like them that you may have heard all have the same root. That root is the desire for clear, tangible proof that Jesus is who he said he is. Or, as it is known by its shorter title, unfaith. And unfaith is the default approach of those who are not sheep of the Good Shepherd. To begin with, the Jews, as John referred to them in his Gospel, weren't satisfied with Jesus' parables about the Kingdom. They weren't satisfied with his works. In fact, they thought some of the works he was doing were actually done by the power of the devil. He certainly seemed to have a habit of breaking the Sabbath law. He associated with the unclean and the sinful. And even with all that, there was enough power in what he was doing and saying to make them curious enough to ask, are you or aren't you the Messiah? And Thomas, who had witnessed firsthand most of what Jesus had said and done, including the raising from the dead of a little girl and Lazarus, and had benefited from Jesus' teaching through those years, even Thomas found talk of this resurrection implausible. Well, if you can prove it to me, I'll believe it. When I place my fingers in the nail holes and my hand in his wounded side. And now, even in our own day, you can search Amazon.com for titles like Evidence for the Resurrection or The Case for Christ and see how many books you can find that offer proof. Or do a Google search for proof of Jesus' resurrection, and then you can sort through the 410,000 results, if you've got seven months to spare. <laughs> well, these questions and these desires for proof and evidence indicate that whoever is asking them or saying them is not interested in faith. In fact, many of those people want nothing to do with faith. 
Many more simply aren't satisfied with faith. So it's no surprise at all that Jesus, after telling the story of the persistent widow about continually praying and promising that God will speedily answer those elect who call upon him, Jesus asks the question, nevertheless, when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on earth? Well, it appears as though he won't find it among those who demand proof. Because even if he provides the proof, just as he told the Jews, I have told you, and the works that I have done testify to me, even with the evidence and the proof, they still do not believe. But if you have had questions like this, or if you have hungered for evidence or proof, don't despair. Because we have the case of Thomas, who himself had these doubts and wonders. We have Thomas's case to shore up the small faith we may have, and we can rely on. Thomas, too, wanted proof and said he wouldn't believe without it. But it's interesting to take a closer look at that encounter Thomas had with the risen Christ. If you'd like to, in your pew Bibles, turn to page 907. And you'll find there the last few paragraphs of the 20th chapter of John. If your pew Bible is like mine, I'm thinking maybe we should provide magnifying glasses. <laughs> My eyes are getting old, too. Page 907 in the left-hand column, you can see a little heading, Jesus and Thomas. Now, Thomas had told the other disciples who had given him word of Jesus' resurrection, that he was alive and had appeared to them, unless I put my fingers in those nail holes in my hand in his side, I won't believe it. Well, a week later, the risen Christ shows up again. Again, not bothering to knock on a locked door, but just suddenly there he was, speaking peace to them, hmm? in a sense, speaking the absolution, saying, peace be with you. And by speaking peace, also giving peace. And then in verse 27, he directly addresses Thomas. He said, then he said to Thomas, put your finger here and see my hands and put out your hand and place it in my side. Do not disbelieve, but believe. So Thomas came forward and poked his fingers in the nail holes and plunged his hands in Jesus. Wait, yours doesn't read that way? <laughs> yeah, neither does mine. Scripture doesn't tell us whether Thomas actually went and placed his fingers in the nail holes or put his hand in Jesus' side. What does it say? Thomas simply blurts out a confession of faith that however small it may have been, suddenly is all, my Lord and my God. You can almost see a wry, yet loving smile on Jesus' face as he asks this flabbergasted disciple, have you believed because you have seen me? Now the implied answer to that question is no. That's the form of that question in the Greek. Have you believed because you have seen me? The implication is no. What did Jesus say in this morning's gospel lesson? My sheep see my face and put their fingers in my nail holes? No. My sheep hear my voice. Jesus directly addressed Thomas and he said, do not disbelieve, do not keep doubting, but believe. And as is always the case, the word of Christ does what it says. It accomplishes what it commands. So that word from Christ, do not believe, but disbelieve, rattled Thomas's eardrums and went directly to its target in Thomas's heart. And there it created the faith that caused this confession, my Lord and my God. You see, it wasn't evidence that gave Thomas faith. 
It was the word of Jesus Christ that gave him faith. And it is the same with his sheep who are gathered here this morning. You hear his voice and something rings in your heart. His word has rattled your eardrums and gone straight to its target in your heart. And here is that word that is doing what it says. I give you eternal life and you will never perish and no one will snatch you from my hand. This is the word of Christ spoken to you directly, face to face. And it does what it says. If that word is a little bit unfamiliar to you, then I would urge you to start training your ears and more importantly, train your heart to start recognizing it. The kids are, are recognizing it already. I think you are too. But get into your Bibles and read the Gospels. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Doesn't matter what order. Doesn't have to be sequentially. Just get into them and read them. And get accustomed to his voice. And you will be surprised when it finds its target in your heart what he starts to bring forth by the power of his word. What it will bring forth is the confident, certain faith that you are in his hands and no one and nothing can take you away from him. This is his word to you and it does what it says. Do you hear him? I think you do. Now may the peace of God, which passes understanding, keep your hearts and minds and ears attuned and in Christ Jesus. Amen. Together with the saints, we confess the one true faith using the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven by the power of the Holy Spirit. He became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in, a, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. 
He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He is spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge the one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated. Let us join our hearts in prayer. Almighty and merciful God, we thank you for the abundance that you have given us throughout this week, that you have provided for all that we need, and that your will has been done. Lord God, we ask in the week ahead that you would continue to guide us and give us strength. Help us to be thankful for all the things that you give to us that we so often overlook. Friends, family, and the so many blessings. We thank you for them all. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Almighty God, in the midst of all the blessings, we see much things that give our hearts worry, that give us fear, and give us anger and sadness. Lord, we pray for the recent violence that has been in our community. Lord, we pray for the family of Matthew Pagel. And Lord, we ask that your hand would be upon this family. Give them per mercy and peace. Help them to Lord, know, Lord, that you are a Lord of grace and mercy. And Lord, we pray that we would walk in grace with them. Help them to know, Lord, that you forgive sin. And Lord, we pray also for the families of those who committed the crime. Zachary Holm and Adam Ozone. Lord, we pray for their families and that those young people's lives have been cut short as well because of their actions. Lord God, we ask for justice, but Lord, we also ask that Lord, that they would know that grace is available to them as well. But Lord, heal the hearts of the family and help us, Lord, to teach our family members and our kids about love and about responsibility and to give guidance even if though it may be hard. And we pray for all those who are bound to addiction and wrestle with drugs. We pray for all of those who are dealing drugs. We ask, Lord, that their hearts would be converted and changed towards you. That rather handing out substances of death that they would be instruments of life in your gospel. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Almighty God, we pray for all those who have been afflicted by earthquakes throughout the world. We ask for the country of Japan and Ecuador would receive your grace and mercy, and in the midst of their natural disasters, that your church would rise and be a voice for you in those places where many are hurting. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Almighty God, we ask that your guiding hand would be upon those whose path of life is, is changing. We pray for those who are in high school, who are discerning where to go next, whether it be to college, the military, or the workforce. We ask that you would guide them and help them to find the path at which you have called them to, so that their gifts and talents would, may serve the community, but then also be a way of serving you. Lord, we also pray for those who are considering going back to school, so switching their careers or jobs, or considering a major move and have the addition of a new baby along the way. Lord, we ask that you would guide them in the midst of their change. Give them strength, give them certainty, and give them their daily bread. We also pray for those who are considering retiring or are in this, the phase of retirement. Give them, Lord, purpose and meaning in their time. 
Help them to know that every breath that we have in this life is a breath and opportunity to serve you in our community. Lord, in your mercy. Our Lord, we pray on behalf of all who are sick and needing of your healing hand. We pray for all those who are suffering of the mind, body, and spirit. We ask that your healing hand would be upon them and heal their bodies. Give them strength and bring them to full health if it be your will. But Lord, if it be your will to call them home, we ask that your merciful hand would take them and free them from their suffering so that they would not linger on in pain and suffering. But give them and their family members hope of the resurrection, knowing that though we die in you, that we shall live in you as well, eternally in our heavenly home in which you prepared for us. Lord, in your mercy, guide our tongues and our actions and our words this week, O Lord. Help us to be instruments of your grace and mercy in all that we do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We bring forth our tithes and our offerings. pray together the offertory prayer. Heavenly Father, you have entrusted us to be the of all, that we Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night in which he was betrayed, took bread gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, saying, Drink of this, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. 
Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father. You may be seated. Come at the Lord's invitation, respond to his voice, and receive the forgiveness of your sins and the pledge of everlasting life. This Sunday we begin uh, our kneeling communion on the first and third Sunday, so we'll have kneeling communion at the rail this morning.
Please stand. Now may the body of our Lord Jesus Christ and his precious blood strengthen you in body and soul and keep you in true faith unto life everlasting. Amen. We have some announcements before we go. First off, uh, the uh, coordinators of Mission of, of Hope at the high school on Saturday, May 7th, are looking for six prayer volunteers from each congregation to take a one-hour shift in the hall and various rooms. And we'll be praying, to, uh, we'll be, uh, be w being willing to pray with people if they would like. If you are interested, you may speak with me or Pastor Crocker or sign up outside the office. The Senior High Youth meets today at Olin Park this evening at 6 p.m. And we'll be joining other youth groups in Olin Park for Capture the Flag and, and a shared devotion. There is a sign-up sheet outside the offices for, our, for the community meal this week. It will be hosted this Thursday. So if you can and be of help, please sign up. This, the CLCW Salad Luncheon is this Tuesday, uh, April 19th. 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. Tickets are avail available in advance for $6.50 at, at here at the church are flowers and things. Or make reservations by calling uh, uh, the church office, and then, uh, but then it'll be $7 at the door. Um, also, uh, ninth grade confirmation students and parents, please sign up on Pastor Crocker's door for confirmation interviews. Um, today, between church uh, during the Sunday school hours, the junior high youth going to Savannah, Georgia, are meeting in the scout room to discuss uh, our upcoming trip, and parents are asked to be there as well. And so we will be having that today. Also, starting uh, the being, uh, first Tuesday, it's May 3rd, um, the, I'll be starting the Gospel of Mark Bible study. And if you'd be interested in uh, being a part of that Bible study will take place Tuesdays for about eight weeks uh, covering the Gospel of Mark. And you can see me for details. Uh, beyond that, feel for, oh, we give thanks for the family of Vi Posh, Matthew Pagel, and Alma Hansen, whose funerals were yesterday, and for the flowers near uh, the organ and the chancel. And we pray God's comfort for them in their time of loss. And um, we also give thanks today at the 1030 service. We will be welcoming Riley Grace, the, so the daughter of Travis and Michelle Rohde into the Lord's family by holy uh, baptism today. And so we we'll give thanks for that. For all other things, please see your parish news and receive now the benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift his countenance upon you and give you his peace. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.
we go in peace to fear God, love God, and trust God.